Good evening. Good evening and welcome to the Cliffy Lands Global Cooking Challenge. Tonight is night one of cooking the food of the Solomon Islands. Uh, tonight we are uh, gonna kind of be winging it and we're gonna be explaining that a little bit later but we're making a green papaya, it's not really a green papaya cur salad so much as a curry um, this time and if you're wondering where the Solomon Islands are they're located uh, kind of off the coast of Papua New Guinea over here to the northwest of Vanuatu so uh, in that general region there we'll get into a little more detail about that as we go uh, but thank you for joining us. Hey, Nils, good seeing you. Uh, thanks for the like and the restream. Remco, thank you very much for the like and the restream. Glad to have you here. Let's uh, have given that enough time to uh, get a little screen. Have enough. Whoa, there we go. And we're listening to music of the Solomon Islands. And if I look a little ragged, it's because uh, it's part of my costume, for my upcoming costume for tomorrow. So I need to grow a hint of a beard. For that but uh that's a different issue so how are you doing today uh this is gonna be like i said a little interesting night let me get some light going here uh, because uh because solomon islands is a little odd um and a little chaotic um there aren't a whole lot of recipes and uh i've only been streaming on meerkat since cooking pakistan uh, but have done a couple uh, Pacific I did no we do Papua New Guinea and Palau um, since there yeah uh, KL yes uh, so um, we've had a hint of what that's like and uh, it, the answer is um, it's um, not very well formed when it comes to recipes hey there Lydia how you doing good seeing you um, let me oh thanks for liking the restream uh, let me get my paperwork here The good part, the good part is it gives a little bit of freedom, though I'm not really good with that. And um, also, unlike European countries and stuff like that, the food actually cooks surprisingly quickly. Um, so I'm still kind of decide where to start first. Uh, so we're doing the green pawpaw curry, and pawpaw in this case is papaya, um, not pawpaw, which is sort of like a fruit that you find in Ohio. They're totally like different things. Um, and it's green. You'll recall when I uh, cooked, uh, I think it might have been Singapore or, or before that, uh, I tried to do a green papaya salad and I was all excited about having green papaya and then I opened it up and abracadabra, it was a Florida avocado and I was really embarrassed. This time I went through great lengths to go find myself an actual green papaya. Um, I had to endure a lot of drawbridges. Which was, uh, if you're following me on Snapchat, you saw my frustration on that. Um, so, uh, without further ado, let's introduce you to the green papaya, shall we? Okay. It's gonna wind up in here. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you green papaya. This one really is a green papaya, not an avocado. Um, so it's just like a regular papaya, only unripe. Um, pregnant women should not eat green papaya. Warning. Surgeon General's warning there. Uh, Derek, hey there, thank you for liking the restream. Hello. Um, and it was not easy to find green papaya. Everywhere I went, it says, do you have green papaya? It says, no, just have ripe papaya. Um, so, uh, finding recipes was next to impossible for Solomon Islands. Like I said, it's, it's kind of odd, even those places that have, you know, the recipes for every country, uh, just kind of bunch all the Pacific Islands together in one big lump and go, here, have at it. Um, do something with sweet potato and cassava and knock yourself out. The one thing I could find that really kind of was Solomon Islands specific, uh, ish was a, uh, cassava that's yucca or tapioca um, pudding. Mm, wasn't gonna be doing a pudding. So that kind of limited things. Um, I'm trying to figure out what exactly I'm gonna do for Tuesday uh, and if I'm even gonna do a third night because there isn't that much to do. But again, delaying with green papaya. So um, let me wash this off because it's a little bit on the sticky side.
Now, theoretically, I could go outside. If I had a ladder big enough, and I drove around town, I could probably find me a green papaya just, you know, on the side of the road. Um, because they, uh, the papayas are used for um, at least one place in the neighborhood has big giant papaya trees in the yard or in the, in the public area. Speaking of which, I cultivated a landscape for another part of this later, but that's a trick I've done before. So if you saw it before, you'll see it again. If you haven't seen it before, you'll see it for the first time. So uh, I have postponed long enough cutting my green papaya. Okay, I've got my chef's knife. I'm gonna make a flat surface. Oh, I need a trash. Okay, and we're listening to uh, the Solomon Islands, the sounds of bamboo. The old bamboo, the old bamboo. So it's soft, see, like that. Um, now I've cooked with green papaya before meerkat here, and um, uh, the best time it came out was uh, for, I believe it was uh, Myanmar, AKA Burma. Uh, I believe that's when it was, when I did a green papaya salad, which was really good. That's a specialty of Myanmar, AKA Burma. Um, and uh, that came out really, really, really well. And if you are anywhere with um, that has a Burmese, Myanmarian um, restaurant, I highly recommend having the green papaya salad because it is good, it is tasty, it's spicy. Uh, this is, there. Uh, I was faced with a couple different recipes. Uh, there's, again, there are only very, very few recipes out there that are labeled Solomon Islands. In fact, when I went hunting, there were so few that one of them was listed as recipes of the Caribbean. And then not only was it like, you know, off by, you know, the other side of the planet, um, it also suggested that the main dish was one that is actually common in Lebanon with lamb, which is not at all what we're looking at here. So, uh, there was a website, a uh, woman who from some years ago kind of abandoned her blog, um, just talking about life in the Solomon Islands, and had just, you know, a couple recipes up there. One of them was a green papaya salad, not like the one in Burma, Myanmar. Um, and I thought about doing that, but it was uh, kind of light on um, anything, on information. And it was just very much a salad, like, you know, like chop it up and make a dressing, boom, it's a salad, which uh, didn't seem terribly exciting. Um, the Solomon Islands, uh, there was a certain amount of agriculture that, that has gone on there, mostly coconut. So we're gonna be doing coconut out the wazoo here. Um, in fact, I've done, got myself a couple cans of coconut milk, which you'll see later. Um, and uh, then I was sort of bothered to see that I had accidentally purchased light coconut milk. Now that might be good for your day-to-day -day cooking, watching your weight, etc., etc. Except when I'm doing my like traditional cooking, I always try to make sure to get like full fat, you know, whatever, just because. Ah, wow, um, so, uh, if you have tasted, uh, regular bright papaya before, um, you'll be surprised because green papaya, uh, doesn't taste like your ripe papaya. You know, ripe papaya is orange. Uh, Jose, is that Jose? Has, uh, thank you for the restream there. Um, uh, ripe papaya, which is bright orange, like the color of this peeler here, um, has... Mm, a unique, unique flavor, uh, which, um, you know, you either love it or hate it. Uh, I have some friends who really hate it. Um, uh, I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not that crazy about the taste of ripe papaya, but green papaya is a different matter altogether. Although, like I said, last time I did green papaya, and this time I said I am doing the, um, the curry, uh, instead of the salad, um, this is cooked, which is interesting uh, because I don't know what this tastes like cooked. So um, now I gotta clear this out. Let me let me just get rid of this. I'll be right back because I need I need the space. Okay. So a papaya. Um, oh, curious note. Uh, 
Spanish uh, for papaya is papaya, unless you're Cuban, in which case is fruta bomba, which means bomb fruit, fruit that's shaped like a bomb. Um, so when I went to the Latin market asking if they had green papaya, um, I didn't know which to ask for. I said, you know, fruta bomba, and they looked at me funny, and I'm like, oh, these aren't Cubans, these are Guatemalans. So papaya, I said, yeah, no, not green. So this is what it looks like on the inside when it's green papaya. The seeds are all white. Usually you're used to them um, being orange with black seeds. So again, I am, I am told again and again that green papaya is quite simply papaya that is unripe. So I'm going with that. If I'm wrong, somebody, you know, somebody point out and tell me and I'll correct myself. Um, so, um, let me get a spoon to cut those out. Into here. Uh, it was just really strange, hard finding recipes. Uh, it, it really, really was. Um, Cause when I've cooked various Oceania nations before. Um, you know, if you know, you know, anything about food in, you know, the Pacific Islands, um, there are probably three things that probably, you know, pop into your mind and you're probably right on three of them. The stream is dropping in and out. Oh, that's not good. Uh, try uh, force quitting and coming back. See if that's any better. I hope. Because uh, I can't... No, I'm definitely on my stream, or uh, on my on my network. So check that out. Let me know if that's any better, um, because I'm not seeing anything suggesting trouble on my end. Um, but let me know. Anyone else? If you're having problem, let me know too. In any case, uh, Pacific Island nation. So the three things you're probably thinking of, if you're thinking of anything, um, are fish, um, coconuts and spam or canned canned meats in any case uh and uh that's uh, pretty much as true here as it is anywhere um the yaggedy 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 there comes the husband um the there is a dish the corned beef seems to be quite the thing uh canned usually no problems here okay um thank you Niels. uh canned corned beef um, is very, very common because, you know, you can't get, you know, not, not too much stuff grows. You can't have, you know, cattle and such in the island. So most of the stuff gets imported and that's kind of the problem. What time is the breadfruit ready? <laughs> no. Yes. One of the national things is also breadfruit, which you saw us do a lot for the Caribbean countries, St. Lucia, St. Martin, St. Kitts and Nevis. Um, here it's called, uh, I forgot. Um, I had it in my head, now it's gone. Um, but, uh, they have that too, but I didn't feel like tackling that. Plus, that would mean a special trip to a certain store, which is far away, and then even hoping that they would have it. And then hoping it would be ripe, which is, was my problem three weeks in a row. Hello, sweetie. Hi. Mm, Halloween costume. <laughs> See, I wanted to have a grass skirt to, to, you know, have a lay and such for y'all today, but that was not to be... Thank you for the coconut milk. <clears throat> okay. Um, see, now his shirt is probably more, you know, in keeping with the, the theme. He's got, like, the touristy shirt going. Um, so I've decided we're making the green coconut curry instead of green coconuts. Uh, green papaya salad. Ooh. Um, and, uh, but the Will second dish... Yes. And the second dish is going to be... Um, uh, big, 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 uh, 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 also curry. So we're going to have curry and curry. And, um... Are you trying to curry favor with uh, me? Ah! Um, but, 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 uh, it, everything cooks rather quickly, so I'm glad he's home now, because that way I don't have to worry about. Now, uh, one of the, one of the recipes, like I said, I kind of merged two recipes, which is odd, um, is, uh, was saying to grate the uh, coconut, the other one said to cube the coconut. And you have fish in here. And I have fish in here because we're having fish also. Good. Um, yes, I got myself some fish, but that comes later. 
Uh, so we're slicing up our green papaya. Uh, for the salad, it's said to drain it and such because it does have a lot of water. Uh, but this curry is going to be cooked, so I think I'm not going to have to worry too much about that. Uh, and it's said to make slices, you know, about the size of your pinky and such. Um, again, this woman in Solomon Islands, she didn't, uh, was like about as vague as vague can be. Um, I mean, step one and the recipe was make yourself a gin and tonic and have it, so. Go figure. Uh, John, thank you for the like. Niels, does your husband know Nishufle nice, nice beer, beer? Do you? Special beer for winter times. No. No, he does not. Um, that's, uh, I'm assuming that would be a Belgian beer, because Niels is Belgian. And is this from uh, the tree across the way? That is, it is indeed. And I'm it surprised is there are any leaves left on it. Yes. Well, you'll see in a moment that I'm doing my same little trick that I did before, uh, which I'll be like the third or fourth, t fourth time on Meerkat that I'm doing it. Um, that uh, making um, rice the, with the uh, pandan leaves, a.k.a. Um, screw palm. But uh, we'll get to that when we get to the rice portion of our dinner. Um, I still have some um, errant uh, seeds that have shown up here. A little part of me is wondering if I should have worn gloves for this because uh, my hands are feeling a little itchy. Um, I did wash the outside, but now that I think about it, I did remember that the sap from the outside is um, itchy. It's from the makers from Le Chouf. So, okay. I guess so. Okay, so um, let's see. He said about a pinky thick and, uh, yeah, screw it. See, one person said strips and grate it, and the other person said cubes. So uh, I'm just going to split the difference. Um, it's all going to get cooked anyway. I have to go pick up a prescription at this public. Okie dokie. Yeah. Well, you have plenty of time. I'm just chopping away. It's Halloween, uh, Halloween Eve here. Uh, I don't know if it is where you are. Um, the Halloween part, that is. And uh, so I've been seeing on Facebook everyone posting their pictures. Like I said, I wanted to get like a grass skirt and such, but that was not to be. But this here, that's for tomorrow. So tomorrow I'll be walking around and I need to get mascara. Oh yes, hey, find the cheapest mascara you can find. Did you hear me? Oh, uh, okay. Um, because I need to draw in a beard. So, uh, it's funny, the first, this will be like the first Halloween I have no facial hair going into it and I'm like growing it just for it. So, things have changed. Um, so, um, curry, curry, curry. So the, the food of, well, first a little bit about the history because the history of a country um, and the food of it are kind of tend to go hand in hand. So the Solomon Islands are a collection of about a thousand islands. And like I said, they're off the coast of uh, Papua New Guinea um, and about northwest of Vanuatu, which is uh, you know gonna be in the Vs. Um, technically, it's in Melanesia, Melanesia, as opposed to Polynesia or Micronesia. There are separate uh, parts of uh, the Oceania, and there are very different uh, ethnic people groups, as they say. Um, the people that first arrived in the Solomon Islands arrived in about 30,000 BC. So wrap your head around that. Um, and they came from, uh, where'd they come from? Uh, from the uh, Papuan from Papua New Guinea, uh, so from that uh, ethnic group of people. Uh, then, like 26,000 years later, so wrap your brain around that, uh, new people arrived and they came in from, uh, they came from which second ones were from, Aust uh, from the Australian region. So they showed up and they brought in uh, outrigger canoes and all that stuff that you think of in terms of the Pacific. And then, um, uh, golly gee, like about 1500 years later, like around 1200 BC, uh, then Melanesian people started arriving. So uh, they're like a mix of three separate peoples. And while you think that, you know, many thousands of years apart, uh, things would be uh, chill, 
uh, not so much. Um, uh, but more on that later. The uh, islands were first spotted by Europeans in 15, I want to say 90, in the 1500s. I want to say like 1568, somewhere in there. Um, and a Spanish explorer, and he thought, hey, he saw these lands, and he thought that they had the treasures of King Solomon, so he called them the Solomon Islands. And the name kind of stuck. Uh, however, um, they, uh, there wasn't like colonization or much anything like that happening uh, for a few thousand years, uh, even though the Germans got some, you know, they got part of Papua New Guinea um, and some islands that are, you know, belong to Papua New Guinea and some that belong to Solomon Islands now. Um, but uh, there wasn't really colonization until the British, I mean, the, the, the Dutch and the Spanish and the British all kind of showed up at one time or another, uh, but they didn't do too well. Um, uh, they kept getting, you know, fought off by, by the uh, indigenous population uh, until like uh, 1898 when the British said, hey, you're a protectorate, you're ours now. And um, that wasn't really terribly easy, but they tried to do um, create uh, plantations, like coconut plantations and such. Uh, but there was this whole nasty habit of um, basically grabbing people and, you know, kind of basically forcing them into slavery um, to uh, work on plantations. And uh, that, again, did not go over too well. So uh, the indigenous population, see, this is what I should have done in the first place. The indigenous, uh, where am I seeing? Uh, the indigenous population uh, weren't too happy with things, uh, but the British, you know, did declare them a protectorate in the, uh, at the end of the 1800s, early 1900s, and then came World War II. And World War II, um, the Japanese kind of took over, wanting to make, uh, to cut off any connections between the US and Australia and New Zealand. And the capital of the Solomon Islands is in, called Honiara. And Honiara is on an island, which name may sound familiar if you know anything about um, that part of history. World War II because it's on the island of Guadalcanal. And Guadalcanal was one of the most brutal battles of the Pacific Theater in World War II. And uh, it went on from about August of uh, 40, uh, 42 until um, February of uh, 43. So it's a long, long hard fight. Um, very, very brutal. Um, the, uh, as soon as the Japanese were coming, uh, everyone kind of, the natives got, uh, sort of evacuated to Australia, but it was, um, pretty, pretty bad. And, uh, afterwards, the, uh, country, uh, fought, sort of, for independence. When Papua New Guinea got independent, they got independent in, like, 75, 76, 78. They officially became independent, and things weren't really easy then, either. Um, because, and now I'm gonna chop an onion. Because they have never really settled down. Uh, that's just kind of a simple way of putting it. But the nation's been sort of in constant crisis. Uh, people fight uh, from, people from one island, fighting you know, the, the other people. And um, it's been just a, a general mess. Um, and then finally in 2000, 2000, mind you. Is it Bobby? Hello, thank you for liking the restream. Uh, you know your history. Thank you. I try. Um, 2003, uh, the Australians and the uh, Kiwis, the New Zealanders, and uh, some other island nations uh, had to basically intervene and kind of say, okay, y'all stop. And um, so it has not been in easy going. Um, that, as you can imagine, doesn't do well for an economy um, trying to develop anything. Because uh, it was all a matter of corruption and fighting and just insanity. It's just berserk. If you try to read the story, you'll just you'll tie your head in knots trying to figure out who's who and why and this and someone buying someone else off and buying votes and other people getting pissed off even though this one and someone getting kidnapped even though they're part of the same tribe because they're not, you know, defending the tribe well enough and it's just, it was very strange. So um, there is, uh, you know, attempts at industry and stuff. Um, but it's, it's slow going. Um, there are some cruises 
uh, that go through the Pacific um, from Australia and such. And I'm guessing they probably land um, there because my world traveling friend who went to every country in the world without flying, he managed to get there and he got there on a cruise ship. So there are cruises that go there. Um, but it's, uh, like I said, it's not, it's not the, the most stable place. And like I said, it's a thousand islands. In fact, when the, the idea of so the Solomon Islands, just in general, uh, when you're call talking about the Solomon Islands, or you're talking about, like, what are you calling them, step one? Uh, most countries that have a the in front have uh, purposely dropped the the. Uh, like the Gambia, the Ukraine, or not the. They're just Gambia and Ukraine, uh, for instance. Um, so the Solomon Islands technically are just Solomon Islands. However, even people in Solomon Islands do use the the. The one of the things that makes that particularly weird is that uh, the Solomon Islands, the nation, are named after the Solomon Islands, the island chain. And you may say, hey, wait a minute, isn't that the same thing? And it's kind of like, well, yes and no, because Solomon Islands, the island chain. Um, includes some islands that are not part of Solomon Islands, the nation. And some islands in Solomon Islands, the nation, are um, not part of Solomon Islands, the island, island group. So it's very confusing. Uh, Micronesia is much the same way. The Federated States of Micronesia um, or is, is a country which is a bunch of islands, but there are but if you're talking about the islands of Micronesia, uh, that includes um, at least two other countries in there. Um, so that's like, uh, I don't know, talking about America and the United States of America. You know, are you talking about Central America and North America or just, you know, USA? So uh, it's like that, y'all. So it's, uh, it's fun. It's strange. It's complicated. They have a, an odd little flag. You'll probably see it over my head, right in my little comments, right up there. Um, it's uh, it's you know very 70s. Uh, you'll notice when you look at certain flags, you can kind of, if you if you think about it, you can kind of guess what what decade the country became independent or at least developed this flag uh, from the general design. So that's very 70s. Uh, the green is the uh, the forest, and the blue is the sky and the stars, and uh, the five stars are the different provinces. Um, so, uh, or sections, or whatever you want to call them. So that is, um, quickly the Solomon Islands. So, uh, I am dicing my onion, and I can't believe I'm doing a half-decent job at that. Um, the, uh, curry. The, uh, this, uh, green pawpaw curry, or green papaya curry, um, is this particular recipe. Uh, like I said, I found on this one woman's website um, for uh, meerkat family folk here. Um, we all know Stiletto Supermom. Well, this is uh, from Stilettos in the Solomons. Um, this uh, woman who had this blog, but she kind of quit doing the blog, um, you know, some years ago. So uh, she hasn't kept it up. But ba but there really wasn't like a recipe blog. It was just kind of, you know, weird random thoughts of her life and then like two recipes, and one of them was the green papaya salad. Uh, meanwhile, this other woman, not in the Solomon Islands, who has cooked her way around the world uh, to great success, she's one of the two people that I know of that actually went from A to Z and finished. Um, I plan on being the third um, come July. Um, other people have started, and they're either en route or have given up somewhere along the way. Um, in any case, uh, she's got a book deal and the whole thing. Um, she obviously had the same issue trying to find recipes. And uh, so I don't know if this, you know, curry thing is, uh, you know, her special creation or uh, something else that she found, you know, deep in the bowels of the internet as I teen tend to look. Uh, regarding the coconut, um, the uh, we're using canned coconut milk. However, one website I looked at happened to have uh, an interesting idea, which was uh, make your own coconut milk. Now, if I had a machete and uh, patience and not the fear that I would chop my little hands off, 
uh, I would try for the second time, you never saw the first time, to get my own coconut milk because there are coconuts outside um, that I could, you know, just go and collect and such. Um, or I could even buy, you know, coconuts at the uh, at the market. But uh, I'm kind of a feared. I'm kind of afraid to do that because I had a hell of a time when I did try to do that before. And it was just way more trouble than it's worth. This other recipe, which I might try because, you know, I'm kind of short on recipes this week. Um, to make your own coconut milk involved uh, either dried or frozen coconut um, shavings uh, and hot water and uh, then mason jars to jar it up. So that might happen. Hold that thought. Be right back. So once we have our onion... We're gonna move on. Uh, I think for our rice, uh, see the uh, the curry goes on rice. The curry goes on rice. Uh, Zul, Zul, Zulzman, thank you for the like and the restream. Uh, uh, bah, 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 bah. Uh, so we're gonna peel and mince two garlic cloves. Uh, but for the, uh, this goes, uh, this papaya curry, green papaya curry, goes on a bed of rice. At least this is what this uh, blog s suggested. Um, so I'm going to do that. And uh, you've seen me use the rice cooker a zillion times already. Uh, and you've even seen me do this specific trick uh, at least twice. Uh, but you're going to see it again if you haven't seen it before. Um, which is uh, really probably my favorite way to easily make rice. I mean, just making rice in general, you know, can be, you know, dead easy with the rice cooker, uh, but kind of boring because you just, you know, wind up with rice. Uh, a few weeks ago, again, I want to say for Singapore, I'm not really sure. It all gets blurred together in my head. Um, we did uh, rice in the rice cooker. I'm sure it was for Singapore. That was kind of spectacular and involved a couple extra steps. Um, so we're not going all those extra steps, but we are going one extra step. Um, or maybe two, who knows. Um, for the, the rice, because I just don't want to, you know, just do rice in the rice cooker just by itself again. Plus, you know, we're in coconut land, so we're going to go coconut crazy. Well... Does anyone else remember that? No, no, there's no way. There's no way that anyone remembers the movie Go and Coconuts. If you remember the movie Go and Coconuts, which I thankfully was spared seeing the entire movie, though I have seen the trailer and heard the ca the album. Who starred in the movie Go and Coconuts? I'll let you Google search if you have to. If you, ha if you want to go find the trailer, it's, it's, it's like one of those so bad it's good things. But uh, we're going coconuts here. While we listen to sacred taro pudding, pudding, sacred taro pudding to the wild man. Well, taro, you know, is uh, cassava. And uh, poi, which you may know from, you know, Hawaii. If you've ever been to a luau or a Polynesian restaurant, you may have tried poi. Um, that's you know kind of a standard thing throughout the uh, nations of Oceania. Um, it's basically cassava, um, and it's basically tasteless. Uh, and they say it's an acquired taste. Um, I did not acquire the taste. Uh, if you have it with, in conjunction with something else like a you know roast pork or something, uh, I imagine it could be okay. Um, but by itself, it is like eating wallpaper paste. Um, and I think uh, pretty much anyone will tell you the same thing, even if they like it. Okay, so there's our chopped garlic. Uh, and uh, here's where I need my gloves. Because I wanted... I'm, I'm, I'm kind of... I'm going to do two things at once, because I wanted to find um, fresh... Thai red bird's eye chilies, but you know, in this neck of the woods, you cannot find them. Uh, if I have, I have to go, you know, like a 45-minute drive 
to the giant global market that has everything and nobody knows where any of it is. That place I complain about. Um, and I didn't, and I don't want to have to go there because it's so far. As it was, I had to go way, way to the Asian market to find Mr. Green Papaya over here. So um, what I do have, which I may be using later, um, is uh, ones that I bought for Singapore in a jar that were pickled. Uh, I've never seen anyone call for pickled red bird's eye chilies, but the good part about those is they don't go bad, like, you know, fresh ones do. Um, Got to figure out how my hand works. There's a thumb on the end, and then you have a pinky finger. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, Cliff, what are you cooking today? Today I'm cooking two things. A green uh, papa or green papaya uh, curry and a, a fish curry. And they don't have any fancy names. Um, I wish I could give you a Solomonese name, but uh, I ain't got that for you. Because, uh, like I said before, my uh, the recipes for the Solomon Islands, or most of these Pacific Island nations, are really, 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 really scarce. Like, insanely scarce. Uh, there is a regular thing that um, I've actually tried, I sort of kind of have tried twice, once for Fiji, um, and once for, I want to say Palau. Um, by the way, you can find everything at cliffyland.com. Just go there, you can uh, look up any uh, old recipes, see any countries that, uh, all the countries that kind of predated um, here. Uh, wow, nice, great. Um, predated Solomon Islands, uh, all 157 uh, that came before. Um, and uh, so, so I got a Serrano pepper is what happened. I got a Serrano pepper because that's all the market here has. And um, I'll just have to live with that. So uh, I'm going to seed and uh, chop this up because we do like us some heat around here. Um, we've gotten so that we love heat. Oh, oh but back to the people. Um, so since you have a mix of uh, Melanesian and Polynesian and Aust Austral Australasian, I, still, I can't wrap my mouth around that word. Aust Australia Australasian. It's a tongue twister for me. Pacific Island people from Australia and such. Um, the uh, the food is very indicative of that, and then it has like a hint of the British because the British were there for you know uh, what like eighty years or so. And uh, but then you have a lot of Chinese. Uh, because uh, that's you know where a lot of the business and tourism and such comes from. So uh, the restaurants, uh, and you'll find this in just about any Pacific Island nation, if you physically go there, uh, pretty much all the restaurants you'll find are either American fast food, like your KFC and such, which is kind of one of the reasons that Nauru... Um, Lola, is that? My eyes are very, very bad. Martina, uh, both of you, thank you for liking the restream. Lola, yes, I hope that's right. Uh, hey, thanks for liking the restream there. Thank you very much. Uh, but uh, if you look at the blog for Nauru, that's N-A-U-R-U, -U, the nation of Nauru, um, that is one of the most interesting slash saddest stories you'll ever read. Yeah, story time with Cliffy. Um, Nauru um, is uh, the smallest nation on Earth. Um... We're not talking about Nauru. We're not talking about Solomon Islands here. We're talking about Nauru. But, you know, they're in the same part of the world. And they have, you know, some of the same challenges. But Nauru is the smallest country on the on the planet. And it's also one of the craziest. Um, so, And it's also, uh, like all these other Pacific Island nations, the most endangered. Um, they all have plans for what to do when they go under. Because they are seeing themselves go underwater like now. Um, global warming is not, you know, a theory for them. It's happening in real time. Um, so, uh, you can see some of the tragic stories about that. Uh, but, uh, the food of, for instance, Nauru, is they are also, like, Nauru is the most, uh, obese country on Earth. Because, uh, you love story time. Thank you. Uh, because of the... 
bad food habits, basically. They have the number one cases of uh, type 2 diabetes. Um, the, they kind of abandoned any kind of traditional fresh fish and stuff like that uh, in favor of canned, you know, fatty meats and American fast food. Um, so it's really, really, they're, they're trying really hard um, to kind of get over that. Um, but these are some of the same issues that you have in most of the Pacific Island nations. So, Solomon Islands is bigger. They have like a land, I mean, if you took the Thousand Islands and put it together, it would be about the same size as uh, Maryland in the U.S. if you're trying to get a general idea of, of size, geographically speaking. So, is he babbling here? So, gosh, I'm kind of running out of things I know about, uh... Oh, yes, um, Solomon Islands also, uh, Jack, uh, Jack London? Jack London. Jack London, the author of, uh, what is it, White Fang? Is that it's famous for all those, you know, boy, books, books, books for boys, adventure books? That's the way I always looked at it. But he visited there in the early 1900s on his boat, which is called the Snark. Called the Snark, which is kind of funny. Um... But his boat was called the Snark, and he was there. Also, um, since the World War II thing happened, uh, I don't know how many, you know, how old any of you are, or how much history you necessarily follow, but um, uh, Pappy Boeington, uh, U.S. Uh, military figure uh, from World War II, and his Black Sheep Squadron were based in... Um, in uh, Solomon Islands. So, Baba Black Sheep, if you ever saw that show from the 70s with uh, Robert Conrad, that's where it was set. Belgium is like a bird poo large. Okay. Okay, and if you say so. Okay, so we've chopped up our Serrano pepper. And now I'm gonna set out uh, some stuff. So I think, I think I might be, well, I better be done with this for now. Well, I'm gonna be done now because I took off my gloves. Um, w while I'm sitting here prepping, uh, this right here is, uh, you may have seen it before. You may have seen it when I cooked Singapore or way, way back when I cooked Palau, if you've been around that long. Uh, but these are uh, leaves of what is called the screw palm. Um, you can Google screw palm or uh, pandan, like panda with an N. At the end, pandan, um, they uh, have this big, beautiful fruit, which looks like a, like a big, giant softball with knobs on the end. And then it, uh, when it gets ripe, it just explodes. And then it looks like candy corn, like big, giant pieces of candy corn on the ground. And uh, in the Pacific, uh, they'll um, turn that into flour. You can make an ice cream with it. Uh, but you have to get the right plant, because there are male plants and female plants. And the one we have out here, I believe, is a... The, the wrong one. One of them, there's no flavor, no taste, it's not edible. I think it's not correctly spelled. Hmm. Um, don't know. Uh, blah, 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 blah. But, uh, screw palm. So, the, the, you can make, they make, you can make flour out of it. Normally it's just eaten, um, you know, they just pull it off the plant and just eat, you know, just chew on the, uh, on the kernels, we'll call them. Um, uh, I kind of wanted to make something with that and have for a long, long time, but the one time I pulled down one of the ripe plants, um, it turned out to be the wrong gender, the wrong sex, <laughs> and, uh, so it, it was the wrong one. I know there was someone nearby that is, you know, the other gender, uh, but I don't feel like harvesting that one. Plus, I'm not really clear on the recipe for the flour and such. These leaves are have these very spiky notches on the end. I don't know if you can see. But they will prick your finger really hard. So that's uh, what I'm trying to cut off so I don't hurt my hand more than I have already. Um, now, the reason I'm doing this with the leaves, the leaves are really handy. And I'll basically have to go outside to my parking lot and then just, you know, with the scissors and just snip them off the tree. And like I said, I've done this before. Um, is that they have this great fragrance and in fact when you're standing near the the tree when um, the uh, fruit is kind of exploded onto the ground um, You'll you'll smell it. It's got this great little, you know flowery smell which is flowery with a little hint of something I don't want to say pungent 
Um, I mean, it's kind of rotting food on the ground, so, you know, like that. Um, but uh, when you cook with this, and you don't eat the leaves itself, um, when you cook with the, with the leaves, they give the food um, a really great fragrance, uh, which is really nice. What are you making tonight? I am making two things. Uh, I'm making a green pawpaw, or aka okay, green papaya curry, and, um, for lack of a better word, a fish curry. So I'm making two curries. Um, for uh, the Solomon Islands. And here I am trimming the spiky ends off of the uh, screw palm, aka pandan leaves, because I'm going to use them for the rice, which I'm going to be mas making the rice cooker, which everything's going to sit on. Um, I did find a couple other recipes, like I said before, uh, but they were either for a, um, uh, a dessert, uh, basically a pudding. Oh, husband is home. I thought you were having guests. Oh, no, no, that's next week. Wait, you're really paying attention. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's, yeah, he's, we have one person invitation. Other people didn't get back. I'm wondering if they're not that into it. Um, I don't know. Right see. Right now. Ouchie. Hmm. Dang it, this thing is, it will bite you. These things will bite you. In fact, uh, the first time I cooked with these was back when I cooked Indonesia, way back in country number 77. So that's, you know, a couple years ago. Those, uh, And uh, my uh, dear friend uh, Mariata, who is not here right now, um, she'd given me a recipe for Indonesia. And uh, it mentioned pandan leaves, and I didn't know what it was, and looked it up, and I went, Oh my god, that is so cool! That's a tree that's outside on my parking lot! And she says, Well, you can buy it frozen. I said, I'm not buying it frozen, I'm going outside. Are you kidding me? Um, oh, another thing I found for uh, here for the Solomon Islands is a recipe for something called um, slippery cabbage. Uh, is that Ian? Am I seeing that name right? Or La Landing Point. Landing Point. Thank you for the uh, follow very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for the like. Um, blah, 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 what did I, oh yeah, slippery cabbage. I did not know what slippery cabbage was. I had to Google the heck out of that. Apparently it's a name that's used in that part of the world, even like Australia and such, for a certain plant, which uh, from the looks of things you can't find here. Um, it's uh, called, um, it's, they can't even decide what kind of plant it is. Um, it was considered a hibiscus, like the hibiscus flower. I don't know if you're familiar with hibiscus flower. We have hibiscus plant like right outside our front door. Oh, I understood. I thought it was tonight. Yeah, well, I mean, I was kind of, you know, previewing it because I've been obsessing about that. So it's, e it's, easy, it's easy to get that confused because I've been getting it confused. Um, but uh, the... Um, Pandan. So this is what I guess. So Indonesia, I went up using it for the rice there, and then I've become an addict to um, putting the pandan leaves in my cooking, especially since, like I said, I just get them outside. So um, one of the dishes that I did for uh, the actually the very first, uh, if you, if you don't count Australia, the very first uh, Oceania nation that I did in this whole rigmarole was Fiji. Um, which uh, I believe is in Micronesia or Melanesia. I get them confused. Um, but uh, one of the dishes I did for that was uh, I made um, kind of a mess of things. I forget the name of it. I feel bad that I forget the name. But it is a traditional dish that's eaten just basically about anywhere from Hawaii to Solomon Islands to anywhere to Vanuatu to anywhere in between. Um, where you would get um, plantain leaves, and in the plantain leaves, you would cook stuff. Um, and the stuff that's most commonly put in there is gonna be your um, corned beef and coconut milk. And sometimes it'll be this, and sometimes it'll be with that, and sometimes it's in a fire pit, and sometimes it has some other things, and sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes people fight over what things are supposed to be in there. But the basic elements tend to be the plantain leaves, the coconut milk, and then maybe the corned beef. And um, when I tried it for Fiji, I made a big old mess of it. Um, and uh, when I tried it for, I want to say Palau again, um, because that's kind of the most recent time, 
Um, I think I kind of did it and it was kind of okay. And I did uh, fresh, um, uh, uh, what you call your um, corned beef instead of canned. And you may have seen that happen. So uh, this, this part's for the rice. But you know, it's getting to be that time, so I might as well be here. So I'm time putting knots in this, in this leaf. Because again, this is not getting, uh, the leaf doesn't get eaten, uh, but you want to kind of bend it and twist it and stuff uh, so it gives off the flavor. And then you throw this away after the rice is done. I'm guessing everyone is out tonight, trick-or-treating, uh, or, or assorted merriment. But th that will be us tomorrow. Making merry. So, uh, so no one guessed my going coconuts question. Golly gee. So, Going Coconuts, 1979, movie starring none other than Donnie and Marie Osmond. It was really, really, really bad. I mean, I didn't see the movie. I saw the trailer and I read enough about it that it seems it's considered one of the worst movies ever. So, um, if you really like, you know, cheesy bad movies with a Donnie Marie disco soundtrack, then check out Going Coconuts. I'm almost sure it's filmed in Hawaii. Yeah. So, uh, we're making knots in our pandan leaves. Screw pine. And now that my hands aren't going to get all beat up. Uh, also, um, when I did Indonesia, I also added in the lemongrass, which is, you know, a common Asian ingredient. Um, but it didn't feel like buying lemongrass, because I always wind up buying lemongrass and either having too much or too little. I either need, like, three stalks and I have two, or I need one and I have three and the other two go bad. So, I just figured lemongrass. Uh, also, I'm trying to decide again what I'm making for the other nights. Ow, dang it. Missed one. Um, because, uh, I mean, I had to dig. Ow, dang it. Bloody poop. Just be careful. He said as he's about to impale himself once more. Um, the dishes. So I found, um, like I said, this, uh, uh, cassava pudding, which is basically tapioca pudding. I was just going to say, it must have been a crappy movie. Those two should stick to singing. Yeah. <laughs> She's a little bit country. He's a little bit rock and roll. Um, yeah, well. You know, considering the years that that was, I'm pretty sure they were done with their TV show at that point. So maybe they were just looking for something else to do. Exploit that whole disco craze, like at the end of 1979, which is the worst time to do it. Okay, so we've got our pandan leaves. Uh, is that Tony, is it? Yes, Tony. Hey there, thank you for the like and the restream. So uh, we put aside our pandan leaves, and uh, I'm just trying to see if I have everything chopped that I need to chop. Well, not really. Um, I'm thinking I should just do all my prep work now. I had set it out as two separate dishes. But considering this stuff tends to cook rather quickly, I'm gonna get started on the prep for the second dish before starting the first one, because again, they both, one t cooks in about 15 minutes, the other one cooks in about 10, so. Landing point, thank you for the uh, restream. So, uh, putting that aside, well, let me get the other prep stuff prepped so I don't get caught off guard. Um, okay, we're going to have curry powder on all sides here. Um, and, uh, Martina, was it you that suggested making my own curry powder? Uh, I'm going to remember that for next time once I'm done with uh, my badia here. No, that's cumin. I know I have curry because we went through all the trouble to buy it. I just need to find it. Cumin, onion, coriander, cloves. I know I have it. I know I do. Hold on. Hold on, I know you're here. I know you're here. You better be here. For the love of Pete, where are you? Ah, there it is. Different brand. Threw me off. Okay. Also see that I had the other paprika that I forgot that I had. Hey, Rains fan, thank you for the like and the restream. So yeah, I have the Spice Islands curry powder here. So there's gonna be curry powder going two ways, one for each dish. Um, 
if you're wondering why curry powder, why the curry is there's the British influence, uh, what tended to happen, I don't know about if it happened in the Solomon Islands, but I know it happened at least in Fiji, um, that uh, there, when the British landed and um, slavery had already been abolished, they said, well, we're not bringing over slaves, we can bring over indentured servants from India. So they came over, and in Fiji, they're like a large part of the population, and they brought their uh, curry flavors and mmm, smell it, smells so good. Um, in with the uh, with them, so uh, that is uh, where that came from. So uh, I I don't know necessarily whether the same thing happened in Solomon Islands, but they got them some curries going. So curry for dish one and uh, two tablespoons for dish two. So, uh, and uh, when I cook Fiji, if you're inter looking for a really fast, easy, in and very, very interesting dish, and uh, you may have heard me go on about this before, um, look up my uh, cliffyland.com, look for my post on Fiji, um, and uh, check out the sweet potato salad that I made there. It's so good, I made it about 10 times. Eight to ten times, I feel like. The parties and gatherings and potlucks. It's sweet potatoes, bananas, uh, spices, and curry. And it's like a potato salad, mayonnaise and stuff. It's You'll be surprised how good it is. It'll be a little unusual, but uh, it's a good unusual. Now, regarding the fish curry that I'm doing here, um, this is the one that came direct from the website of this woman in the... Uh, Solomon Islands, which was uh, beyond vague, and uh, so um, I decided to take the uh, make the executive decision. Yuck! I don't like curry. Oh God! But it is so good. I mean, I really didn't have I didn't have negative feelings. I didn't have feelings at all about curry. I mean, I was like, mmm, it's kind of weird. Um, but oh my God! I've come to yeah. I've come to quite like it. I, so many things I've get gone from either not having feelings, like if they were negative, they've become neutral. If they were neutral, they become positive. Uh, Carrie, thank you for liking the restream. Good seeing you. Uh, is that Seth? Thank you for the follow. And uh, are you the first time watcher? Yes, thank you for being a first time watcher. Thank you for coming by. So, um, mm, that one doesn't look too good. Um, the premise here for the uninitiated is that uh, starting in 2012, after 30 years of not knowing how to cook and never wanting to come near a kitchen for reasons involving me accidentally almost killing myself, um, I did not uh, learn to cook, ever learn any basics, and I uh, decided to get off my butt in 2012, learn to cook by cooking a different country in alphabetical order from the 193 UN member states, one week in alphabetical order until I get to Zimbabwe. Now we're at week number 157 out of 193, and we are cooking the Solomon Islands. So, uh, and now I'm doing something I never would have imagined me doing in the beginning, which is like saying, you know what, let me change this up a little bit. Since this recipe was so vague, and there didn't really seem to be much of a recipe to start off with, um, it felt like this needed some onions, uh, and uh, since I have some scallions sitting here, shallots, scallions come later. Um, I'm uh, gonna use them uh, for the fish. So, um, because uh, these are running out, or their time's running out in any case. So, uh, that's what I'm doing. Do, do, do. Oh, but curry, wow, I, I didn't, let me tell you, curry, I never had had Indian food at all, in any way, shape, or form. I was in college, and I had, well, call it a date. It was a date. And he said, oh, there's, this guy didn't live in town. And he said, oh, there's a, is there an Indian restaurant in town? I said, Indian? You know, what's Indian food? And he said, yeah, yeah, we'll go, you'll like it. And we sat down and he ordered whatever it was. And I'm talking to him and I'm looking and I'm going, why is your ear sliding down your face? I mean, it had like this weird, you know, the flavors and everything had such a bizarre effect on me. I was like, I was hallucinating. I said, I've never felt anything like this. This is bizarre. So, uh, I wasn't a big fan of the food at first, but, you know, over time, and it's like the very favorite thing of the husbands. So, um, so I, I've become quite the fan 
of all the different um, curries and flavors and stuff. So um, I'm looking forward to Sri Lanka in a, in a in the new year, I guess. Danny, hey there. Thank you for liking the restream. Um, these shallots are a real pain in the butt to, to peel. I'm just going to put that right out there. Because uh, I don't like them and they don't like me. Uh, I can't ever tell when they're peeled either. Which sucks even more. These are these baby ones that I had got the Asian market. And uh, they're, you know, not the freshest in the universe. Uh, I wound up buying larger, fresher ones for, um, for the next night's dish. Uh, I'm debating on exactly which one to do because for that, there I have a soup, which could be fine, except, I, I, you know, I don't like eating soups. Uh, the way we have dinner and such, it just, you know, the main dish winds up getting cold and, and stuff. So, uh, I'm not, uh, so one dish is a soup. Um, another dish is really a variation on something else that I've already done which is a sort of a chicken stir-fry of sorts. And um, I, I might do it, but I, I'll have to change it in some way. Danny, hey. Um, so, because uh, um, like I said, these dishes are so vague, I feel that there isn't really a traditional recipe to, you know, really be, you know, screwing with uh, and pissing people off. So uh, as long as I don't put in ingredients that are totally like not at all from the area, uh, I think I might be okay. Um, and I'm not like the crazy experimenting type anyway, so. Although that's kind of funny. Since I'm just sitting here telling stories while I peel shallots. Shallots, shallots, shallots. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, the part of the origin story I don't tend to tell. Uh, not because I'm embarrassed, it just doesn't come up is, uh, you know, I've said before that I never learned to cook. My mother really, to be honest with you, never learned to cook either, which is probably why I never learned to cook. Um, and uh, so I have no idea, like, what goes with what. And uh, I've always been afraid because uh, when I was, like, in junior high, um, I, my mom said, oh, make your own sandwich. And faced with everything in the cupboard uh, to make my sandwich, I said, well... Let's see, what'll I make? Uh, I made a sandwich. It was a um, pe peanut butter and jelly, ketchup, raisin, and Vienna sausage sandwich. And uh, it tasted kind of what you imagine it tasted like. The, uh, the raisins kind of made the peanut butter taste kind of crunchy in the, and, the ke and the ketchup uh, and the peanut butter was just an odd combination. So that was fun. Uh, hey, Clifton, how you doing? Good seeing you. Glad you're here. Uh, is this the night that, uh, I don't know where you are, each of you are, but, um, I'm always very confused nowadays about, uh, trick-or-treaters, seeing as, um, in my adult life, um, I have seen exactly one trick-or-treater. And, uh, as you can tell, that's a long time. Um, so, uh, I don't know why it works the way it does, or if it varies from place to place, because in Columbus, where we lived... Uh, until we moved back here to Florida. Um, I'm stumped. They did their children, they did a trick-or-treating last night, which is not Halloween. I do not know how they all kind of got together and decided, yeah, that's the night. The big Halloween street party that happens, you know, in the big neighborhood that we lived in, um, happened last Saturday night which last Saturday night, so that was a full week before Thanksgiving, uh, uh, Halloween, which again is weird, but the reasoning for that I can kind of understand for Columbus, Ohio, because they don't want to conflict with a football game because football is the religion there. Um, but the kids thing, I don't get. You know, um, because even if Halloween is on, you know, a weeknight, uh, they, or they just don't, they just they always do it on some other random night which I don't comprehend. I mean, how do you know when to be ready? Um, I mean, I kind of wondered if we'd get trick-or-treaters here, but um, three years in, still nothing, so we stopped buying candy. If someone comes by, we'll give them quarters. Here's change for the meter. Happy Halloween. So, 
Yes, the one, it was 1993, we got one trick-or-treater, and that was like, you know, by contract, they came by, by arrangement. Ding dong, there they are, thank you, here's your candy, goodbye. Decades, you know, decades and presidential administrations later, here we are. Okay, so I'm going to finally get to chopping my shallots. This is going to be for the fish, uh, because the fish didn't have anything in the way of onions, and that struck me as kind of strange. So I got these bitty bitty shallots, 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 and I'm um, chopping them. And I'll also be chopping scallions, which I always get the name confused. I get S names all transposed uh, to dress both dishes. Uh, because it seemed like a good idea. And uh, some other recipe for some other dish I saw, they did that and I went, oh, that seems to work. Um, for the mother nights, I was thinking of doing a Chinese, you know, a dish, a Chinese dish that you would find in the Solomon Islands. Because um, I found a recipe specifically linked to the Solomon Islands and it's basically Chinese noodles. They were sort of like a pad thai, a merge of Thai and Chinese and Solomonese. So, there's that. I am not being terribly uh, careful on these scallions here. Shallots. See, there I did it again. <laughs> Every time I get it backwards. You know, this is going to be like, I'm going to be on Jeopardy or something. That'll be like the, the big money question, and I'll bust on it because I say the wrong thing. So shallots have a kind of more delicate taste than... Um, Onions, your regular yellow white onions, um, and of course each they're all each onion has its own different characteristics uh, that I, I I understand intellectually. I do not you know understand uh, flavor wise too much yet. Uh, so uh, although I do know that white onions uh, are more um, have much more water and they're more traditionally used in um, Latin American foods and like salsa and such like that. So we have yeah. our chopped scallions. So that's going to go over here. Uh, uh, okay, well, I can't uh, postpone anymore. Ow. Oh, that's that stupid thing that nicked me. Shoot. Um, tomatoes. Uh, this fish recipe mentioned tomatoes. And uh, I can't even begin to tell you. It said... In the ingredients, this is a tomatoes. I don't know how many, a lot. It said a lot. However many you want, go nuts. I don't know how you cut them or whatever, just tomatoes. Maybe one, maybe a hundred. Uh, so I decided on the number three. I think that's a, be a bit much, but uh, I decided on the number three. So, three tomatoes, it shall be. I swear that thing did catch me. What? That uh, little screw palm thing. It nicked me right there. Oh. Okie dokie. Bad screw pop. Okay, so we're gonna core and dice our tomatoes and I need a bowl for them to land in when they're done. Dang it, right there. New, uh, we got new bananas. Oh, um, someone uh, was noticing the bananas last time. Uh -huh. And said, uh, are those the same bananas? Are they plastic? They've been there the whole time. Uh, <laughs> I said, no, they're different bananas. We just keep resupplying. We just kept resupplying. Okay, so we're going to core the tomato. And we'll do that for the other two. Uh, so the fish is basically... Um, you know, pan fried uh, in about five minutes time. Um, what time is it? I gotta look. Ooh, Seven nuts. Okay, so I, as soon as I core these, I need to get my um, rice going uh, because uh, I want them ready. Ooh, one of these tomatoes is riper than the others. Yes, it is, and these are just bought just today too. 
Well, good thing I'm cooking it now. Okay, so uh, let me stop everything and get my rice cooker ready. Um, which means two things. Uh, one thing is I need to get stuff out of the way. Um, two, get out rice cooker. Rice cooker out here. Ta-da. And get out my rice. I, I think it's long grain rice that I have. I'm not even really sure what exact rice we have left. We're gonna find out. So we have, drum roll please, long grain rice. I saw some jasmine rice in the store and I was like, well, I got this. So we got one cup of rice in there. And then instead of water, um, the trick here is to use coconut milk. That's one of the reasons I got coconut milk. So we're going two to one ratio here because we didn't soak the rice or anything and this is your regular long grain rice. And I'm hoping for one can will be enough. 13.5 ounces. I say it's enough. Um, I don't feel like opening another can. Hope it'll be enough. Uh, can opener. So there's coconut milk. Hey Anne, hi there. Thanks for liking the restream. Uh, there's coconut milk and there's coconut cream. Coconut milk um, is, I, mean, I don't know if you've ever opened a coconut, but it, like if you've been on a cruise or something, like chop it open, you just get a straw. And that's the coconut water. So that, you know, fancy health foody kind of yada 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 that you buy um, and you see in bottles and stuff these days, that's theoretically, that's just the coconut water. And then the coconut meat on the inside is, well, coconut meat, and shaved coconut comes from that. Uh, coconut milk is those two things sort of blended together. Uh, however, there's a light and heavy. So the one that's uh, lighter is the coconut milk, and the heavier one, which is more the cream, is the cream. So, uh, but we're going with the coconut, uh, coconut milk here. It's fatty enough, because uh, I asked for the uh, regular fat, not the low fat. So we're putting you in here. I really hope that's enough. 13.5 ounces, two cups is 16 ounces. Let me think about that. Meanwhile, let me put in my, hey, Kathy, how you doing? Thanks for liking the restream. Uh, let's get in my pandan leaves. Let's stick those in here. I'm still deciding whether to open up. I know I'm going to have to open another can of the coconut milk anyway. How much do I need for the curry anyway? A whole can. I say that's enough. I hope that's enough. Hey there, oh yes, um, so hand and leaves. You know what, I'll fill the rest in with water. 13.5, 13 ounces please. 13, uh, Fill in the rest of the water. There. That is, 16 is two cups, yes, okay. In case my brain decided to just stop for a moment there. Uh, so, I am good, thank you, how are you? I'm doing okay, I'm doing okay, glad it's the weekend. Glad it's the weekend, let me tell you. If, uh, Neil Sears, uh, well, Snapchat buddy, he's, he probably saw me today bemoaning me, uh, having to go out and just buy two things became like a trip, it became an hour and a half trip of me going around having to find, you know, three, four different stops to find what I needed. Because uh, well, only one place had the green papaya, 
and uh, the fish was the, from the fishmonger, and that meant crossing two bridges, and both of them, the drawbridge went up when it wasn't supposed to. Like, I have them timed. I know this one goes up on the hour, this one goes up on the quarter hour, this one goes up on the half hour, and both of them decided to say, mm, just threw it all up in the air and said, let's do something different. Let's surprise Mr. Cliff. He's coming right there. Let's make that drawbridge go up. How about now? Both ways. Two different bridges. That's what happens when you live on an island. So uh, let me get this all in here. Since it is the time that it is, uh, it means it's time to just get it started. Let's get it started. And uh, which plug are you? You are this one. Okay, so we're just gonna get that started so that it can do its thing, cooking, while we do the rest. Rubba rubba. Okay, tomatoes are gonna land in here, and I gotta clean this off. My God, I thought that, I mean, oh, I know it cooks really fast. I know sometimes finding all the ingredients is the biggest challenge, it's just a pain in the butt. I went to the Latin market, they didn't have the green papaya, they had ripe papaya. Uh, I went to the produce stand, um, they did not have green papaya, they had ripe papaya. I said, fine, I'm gonna have to go to the world global market, you know, and which is, you know, far away and a total pain in the butt. And halfway there I said, you know what, let me try the Asian market, which is also very far away, but just, you know, it's slightly less. And so, you know, I went there, but you know, already I had, you know, dealt with one bridge. And so the Asian market had the green papaya, and they had some things I decided to use for some of the other, uh, the other night. I'm thinking singular. I doubt it's going to be plural, if I'm, if I'm being honest. Um, so, uh, but then I said I need to get the fish. I can't get the fish at the regular supermarket because I've had bad experience. I mean, not like unhealthy bad experience, but like, yeah, that's not the greatest fish bad experience. So uh, I went to the fishmonger and I went to a different one because, you know, I was in a different town. And uh, so I got the, uh, the, brusque New York, the brusque New Yorkers saying, here's the fish. Um, and, uh, and I was thinking, oh God, I got to keep this fish fresh while I go to the supermarket. And then, ugh, so it was annoying. You know, especially with just basic stuff, you know? The green papaya, that's, I guess it's not terribly basic. And I, and I was desperate, to because I said, um, if I'm doing the green papaya, I'm not doing the mistake I did, you know, last time, which was say, hey, everybody, here's green papaya, and then show off an avocado. Because I came off like a boob. Because I was not paying attention to what I was doing. And it was under the sign that said papaya, and it was green but I wasn't paying attention. But that was then and this is now. So, uh, dicing these derned, uh, uh, I used to not care about seeding and coring, um, but now I do. And that's making things slower. Uh, we listen to Now to Ao Rauri. Or I listen to uh, sounds of uh, the Solomon Islands. Well, everyone is out trick or treating. So, uh, is anyone getting dressed up? Did you get dressed up at work? Anybody have any, any fun Halloween stories to tell? Yet, ever, today, uh -huh. this week, in life? I mean, I've been recounting uh, my Halloween stories to people so far. Like in my world, if I run out of things to talk about, first world problems. I'll, I, yeah, I know, I know, I know. There's people dying in the Mediterranean. I get it. But uh, you know how Maslow's hierarchy of needs works. Did you ever learn about that? I learned about that in college. Every every semester, I had, again, I had to start off learning about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. That you have uh, at the bottom, you have like, you know, food, clothing, shelter, basic survival, you know, then you have, you know, other stuff, and at the top you have self-actualization, 
It's like when you reach, when you've fulfilled one, you you know you need to fulfill the next one, and of course, you know you can't be thinking about top ones when you don't have the bottom ones. But it's like yeah, when you have the bottom ones already, you know you're gonna be annoyed of other stuff. It's just the way human beings work. So, I mean, I did feel bad. There's this one Facebook friend I have who apparently is you know very wealthy. Um, I mean, more than I even thought. And she was complaining on Facebook. It's it's almost seemed like a joke. She was talking about, oh, you know, the the chauffeur couldn't get through, and then the spa lady, something or other, and then the gardeners, and couldn't, you know, the lawn. And, and I was thinking, yeah, okay. Now I know how you got tickets to the Emmys, and the Oscars, and the Grammys. You're connected. You've had Tim Gunn in your house. So I dig. It's weird where we live here, because it's a, such a, you know, depending which direction you go, you have people that are like the point oh 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 one percent. I mean, Tiger Woods lives. I'm not allowed to dress up at work. Uh, well, I can dress up anyone want to, because... Uh. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, no, Tiger Woods lives, you know, uh, I'd say, you know, 10-minute drive tops from here. And he's got his new, you know, his headquarters is, you know, basically on the corner. But then you have, you know, your, you know, your usual, like, tra Florida trailer parks, like, right there also. So it's this weird dichotomy of, you know different people next to each other, all sharing the same zip code, which just makes for weird circumstances sometimes. Not that there's anything wrong with it, it's just odd. So, Halloween. Since, we're, since, since I brought up the topic of Halloween, no one else is sharing, so I'll tell my Halloween story. This is mm, decades ago. I was living in D.C., and um, there was a guy I'd met, just really an acquaintance, and uh, I just moved to D.C., and I said, I don't know anyone, and Halloween is coming, I'd like to do something. And he says, well, I got invited to this party, do you want to go? And I said, sure. And he said, well, here's the address at this person's house. And I'm really super self-conscious, and so I went out and I bought myself a, a costume, a Peter Pan costume. But I wasn't going to want to be walking down the streets in broad daylight wearing this costume. So what I did was I put the costume in my backpack and I decided to go to the party. And being the person that I am, you know, big boob, I just showed up like the second the party was supposed to start, which was probably not the best idea. And um, uh, I rang the doorbell and it was, uh, the door opens and it's one of these buildings where you open the door and you see the stairway going straight up to the second floor. And so I said, uh, okay, but standing in front of me is Marie Antoinette. Like, top to bottom, you know, Marie Antoinette to the nth degree. And I was like, wow. And he says, what are you doing here? I said, I'm here for the party. He goes, where's your costume? You're not allowed in without a costume. And I said, oh, it's in my backpack. I, I can get dressed inside. Well, you better have a costume. I said, fine. So I go inside. I am the only person there. And so I just, you know, get dressed in my costume. The guy doesn't even come out. So I'm standing alone in this guy's apartment in my costume, and eventually people start showing up. And um, yeah, I uh, my friend, my acquaintance never showed up. It was just me and like an apartment full of strangers in my old Peter Pan costume. So uh, I didn't dress up for Halloween for a while after that. So there's that. But then we didn't uh, do it for ages. Uh, when we were in Columbus, they decided to start having the big street party, like right outside our front door. And I said, well, now I, I have no excuse. Now I have to. Because, I mean, everyone I know is outside my door. It would be stupid not to. Why am I using this knife? Um, this is my tomato cutting knife. Um... So, yeah. So then we had to start, you know, thinking about Halloween costumes every year. But now the, whole, the street party is like an hour away. So that's a different challenge now. 
There's nothing happening around here. N-O-T-H-I-N-G. So, Solomon Islands. Boy, I've, I've run out of stuff to talk about Solomon Islands. There isn't that much to say. They play music on the bamboo flute there, apparently. So, tomatoes. This is, tick I told you I'm the world's slowest prep cook. I am, I am, I am. We had a kind of a, a near record number of people watching uh, Tuesday's Slovenia dish, which is crazy. And I'd kind of run out of things to cook for Slovenia, I was sure. And then, uh, what do you know, today, you know, pops up on my Facebook stream from Savour. The home cup noodles from Slovenia. I'm like, ah, oh, God, I would have done that. That would have been so much better than this one thing that I did. Damn. I love anything from Savour. That's always my first go-to. But, you know, not like every country has, you know, an edition in Savour magazine. So... So Spain is going to be, you know, I'm going to have plenty of things to pick from for Spain. That's coming up in the new year. So we've got Solomon Islands this week. Next week is, anyone want to take a guess? Alphabetically speaking, this is the one where we're going to have special guests going. A special guest. Maybe more than one. Uh, next week is going to be Somalia. So Somalia should be interesting. Um, and oddly enough, I've actually had Somali food. Because when we lived in Columbus, um, and you'll hear this next week too, um, uh, uh, the second largest Somali population in the U.S. of A, uh, because um, when they resettled uh, Somalian refugees in the U.S., uh, they went to Minnesota and they went to Columbus. So uh, there are Somali restaurants in Columbus, and we went to one, which is very good, um, but that uh, it's like Ethiopian food, only with pasta on the side. Um, that's if you've ever had Ethiopian food. If you haven't, then you still don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, you'll find out next week. There's a guy on Twitter that I follow, who fo we follow each other, who uh, he discovered me a few weeks ago. And his, his idea is he wants to eat a meal from every country in the world in a restaurant without leaving this New York City. So, uh, and it has to be countries with more than a million people. So he's got the countries laid out, and he's working his way through, and it's a very quite interesting. It seems to be like a lovely, lovely man. So uh, he just had Yemeni, Ye Yemeni, Yemeni food the other day, uh, which apparently was harder to find than you think, because uh, he went to a Yemeni place and wound up being Egyptian. So he had to try again. Okay. Oh my god, I still have one to freaking be shut up fussin. Fooey, 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 fooey. My rice is a bubbling away while I'm babbling away. That went in the wrong place. Oh well. That went to the wrong bowl. We will live. Live, live, live. Okay, now it's getting late, but I think I'm, am I done? I better be done, almost done, with the prep. Because again, fast cook time, so they say. I'm gonna have to do them both at the same time. Start on the, uh, I was gonna start on the curry, on the, uh, pa on the papaya, and then it's gonna be the fish. Am I right? So let me make sure I have, uh, really fast. Really, really fast here. Got to chop some shall scallions for the top of the dressing. Okay, I have a couple of these left. You have a quiet bunch today. Okay, these have I washed earlier. You, I'll deal with later. You, we deal with now. Okay, trash. Trash. Okay. Uh-huh, get out, get the nasty ones off. Yo. Trash. Hello, cheese. Uh, I really wanted a grass skirt. I think I have a lay somewhere. 
We must have our lays from our trip to Hawaii somewhere. Somewhere. We'd have to like chug through the attic for that. Which, uh, if you've ever been in South Florida, you know an attic is not a fun, comfortable place to be. Okay. Okay. Here we go. I'm just gonna use the white parts. Cause I don't need the rest. Okay. So that's just gonna be for dressing. The end. And uh, that's it. Okay. So let me wash this off and finally we're gonna get on the actual cooking. Oh my lord. What? Just the time. I know it cooks fast, but still. Even then, I take half an hour longer than I think to actually do the prep. I suck. I suck. Okay. So, now I've got that going. Let's move. This is the time, people. This is the time. Okay. Can't forget the camera. So, we're going to need two, two vessels. We're going to need a saucepan. And we're gonna need our skillet. And I can smell coconut. How's it smelling like coconut right now? Saucepan, lid. And scaring the cat. Okay. Uh, rubba, rubba, rubba. which goes first? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. This one. Okay. So we're going to heat up this, and uh, because it is what it is, we're going to add coconut oil because we're all about the coconut. 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 Coconut oil is buried in the bath because we never use it. In the back and the other back. Uh, first, I'm going to be using sesame oil also. Hi from Turkey, Istanbul. Hello, Istanbul. What time is it where you are? Let's see. What time is it in Istanbul right now? It is 7 22 p.m. I cannot be right. What time is it in Istanbul, Turkey? Wow, you are up late. It's two thirty-three in the morning. You are uh, you, you are a night owl. Hello, greetings. Uh, so good seeing you. So we've got coconut oil here, and uh, we're gonna shoot for two tablespoons of coconut oil. Co if you've ever had coconut oil, it's very um. Sometimes it's solid. Sometimes it's like like this. So, uh, two tablespoons of coconut oil in there. Two, th that is very late. So, are you are you normally up this late? Uh, be a Friday night for you. What's 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 happening in Istanbul? Uh, I have a uh, uh, an internet friend who spends time in Istanbul, but he works in um. Uh, what of this uh, town that's uh, very beautiful on the coast with the uh, waterfalls and stuff, and I can't remember the name. Uh, so, uh, coconut oil here. So, we are going to, we'll be cooking turkey in the new year, by the way. We've done most of the, uh, ouch, uh, most of the countries uh, that were part of the Ottoman Empire before um, already, uh, but now we are going to be doing, uh, be doing turkey in the new year. But right now we're doing the Solomon Islands, and I need to heat up uh, this uh, coconut oil in here. We're going to add in our onions and garlic. So let me get the onions and the garlic. So onions here. Go. I am very sorry I don't speak English. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, mm, thank you for being here. Must be very difficult to maneuver. 
cross language. Mmm. It's a whirling dervish for you. I don't know. Um, so, uh, onions. I need to get my camera and uh, put in the onions into the coconut oil. And yay, I got a sizzle. And then I'm going to add in the garlic. There's a garlic right here. And I'm going to soften these uh, here just for a minute. Uh, oh, let me add in the uh, chilies now. Oh, thank you for the uh, like. What are you making? Here I'm making the green uh, pawpaw curry, or green papaya curry. Um, and then I'm gonna be making the uh, fish curry right over there in like one second. So here we're adding our serrano chilies. Hello Gucci, how are you doing? How are you doing, what's up with you? Uh, we are cooking up our curries, or curry one and curry two for the Solomon Islands. Uh, Solomon Islands that has <coughs> no real recipes to speak of, if I'm, if I'm being honest. Um, so we're cooking these till they are softened, um, and then we're going to add the curry powder, which is the... which one? It's the first one. We have our curry powder here. So I want to keep these things separate. So while the softens on this side, thank you for the like, Randy. Um, let us. Uh, boop -ba -do -ba -do. Uh, oh, I'm gonna get more coconut oil over in this uh, on this side, and the skillet. But I'm gonna mix it in with sesame oil um, because that sounded like a pretty cool idea. Also. I am not, uh, don't have a whole ton of, um, coconut oil left, also. So, um, rotating over here, and I'll need to move you, I know, I know, I know, I know. Get you a better view. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, ah! Not falling over. Or going cross-eyed. There. Okay, so coconut oil on this end. Coconut oil there. There's very little left here. And uh, I'm gonna mix that in with some sesame oil, which is not open. Okay. Okay, so sesame oil. Uh, this is for the fish. So. These are kind of, you know, vague sort of recipes, so I'm sort of okay with, um, uh, winging it a little bit. So while I heat that up, rotate back. Hopefully I don't burn my hand as I do that. So apparently I had the pot a little too hot, but it'll be okay. Um, so over here... Uh, I need to quickly open the other can of coconut milk. Fast, fast, fast. Quick like a bunny. So we're going to be in two things at the same time. So... That's what we're doing. This is getting soft. That is... I don't know how soft. I, they're kind of translucent. Uh, I know I don't have... I don't want to burn them. The pot was a little on the, on the hot side. Um, but I think it's softened a little bit. Mmm, I can smell that uh, sesame oil now. Uh, hey, Jessica, thank you for the like and the restream. Um, over there. Uh, so now on this side, and again, I apologize for doing two things at the same time. 
Um, where did I put my shallots? I chopped them. I chopped them. I have them somewhere. Where did you go? Oh, there you are. Okay, so over here on this side, I'm going to put in, and the fish, I'm going to put in my shallots, which I just kind of decided to add to this dish because it seemed like a good idea. Ow, come on. Great. This is not the time for that to happen. Ah. Get my spatula. Okay. Okay, so here is. Hey there, what are we cooking today? We're doing two things. We're doing. This is a fish curry that we're doing for the Solomon Islands over here. Um, and then over here, we're doing a green papaya curry, uh, which is going to be over here. And this is the time that we're going to add the green papaya. So, the green papaya over here. So that's going to go, hold on, let me get a picture of the shallots. And the green papaya. In you go. Uh, now this recipe said to cube them. The other recipe for the green papaya so I said to make strips with them. I kind of did a little both. I hope that was not a mistake. It's going to take a while for this to soften. But it's going to have to do it in the... Uh, coconut oil, garlic, uh, the, the, the curry powder. We're gonna add the curry powder here. Yep, this one. Am I right? Yeah, this one. And our uh, coconut milk. That's too hot, and so we're gonna mix this up. And then cover it, let it cook for about, said about 15 minutes, which would be kind of about what I was expecting dinner time to be, which is kind of amazing. That I knew I took that long to prep. Um, so, uh, I'm gonna make sure I add some salt too, because, uh, there was no salt referenced in here. That has to be a thing. Okay. And you know what? I'm gonna add pepper, just because it seems like the thing to do. It seems like a requirement. Even so many as, uh, as I, that, that hit me before, Polynesian dishes, or Oceania dishes, that haven't said anything about seasoning with salt and pepper, and then afterwards I've tasted it, and it goes, it sounds like, Tastes lucky without the salt and pepper. Now that's too hot. And I think I've screwed up the scallions over here, the shallots. Boo! I know, I keep messing it up. Well, hold on, I'm taking that off the heat. Covering our papaya here. Let that cook. And, uh, okay, tomatoes. Going into the onions, or into the semi-burnt. Okay. okay. And stirring until soft. Again, like I said, this recipe was, it could not get more vague if it wanted to. Um, and then we're adding the other curry powder into this over here, which is right there. Come back. Focus. Okay, curry powder in. Can empty. Okay. And then what happens? Okay. That salt and pepper to this sucker over here. You know, this feels like this needs coconut oil for pizza. But did not say anything about coconut oil on this side. Well, there'll be plenty between the rice and this. We'll be coconutted out. So adding salt and pepper over here. 
salt, and pepper, and I know I need to taste. So I will, I promise I will. If you're out there, I know you're going to say, oh, by the way, I always keep raving about this website, The Tasting Table. And again, you know, every day they have something new. Today, uh, the yesterday was the top 10 mistakes, you know, cooks make. And uh, yeah, there's uh, all the mistakes I've made right there. Not tasting your food, uh, not taste, not uh, see, not putting enough salt, being afraid to put in salt. Um, all my usual mistakes are all right there. So, to remedy that, Cliffy is gonna actually try tasting it. Did you taste your food? Oh, now I smell the curry. All curry-like. The slurry of curry. Okay, here goes. For you. Yum. And uh, I should get my fish out. Mmm! My, that is... Mmm! Tasty. Um... That's very tasty. Wow, I'm surprised. <coughs> okay, wow, okay. Go oh, bite. Love it when you taste. Yes, thank you, Anne. You, you've taught me well. Okay. Mm -hmm. I did kind of... There's some spice in there, buddy. There is most definitely some spice. Okay, here I gotta get my fish. My fish. I got a pound of fish. I got uh, what you call your um, uh, uh, snapper, red snapper. My, that is spicy. That's, you know, not what you'd expect from an actual Polynesian dish, if, if, if I'm being honest. Uh, but uh, there you have it. So uh, snapper fillets. I got a pound. That's three of them. The other mistake was crowding the pan. I don't know how I'm gonna act. I'm gonna avoid that. Um, but here goes fish laying. Oh yeah, yeah. Shenanigans. Out of my way. Okay, here goes. Laying fish down, lay it down away from you, lay it down away from you, ah, not enough room, and I, I don't know, there's that mistake about crowding the pan, and here I am doing it, crowding the pan. It's about two to three minutes aside. It's kind of sitting on top of that stuff, which I don't know how well it's going to cook on there. I turn the heat down so it's kind of on a more medium medium than a high medium. I think I should turn it down more. Okay. So there's that. I mean, I'm going to try to put my cabinets back together. Cabinets? You know, the stuff in the cabinet. Ah. That took everything out. So. Put, put it back together, uh, Jenga style. Jenga, Jenga, Jenga! Oh, we do have a little extra virgin olive oil left, after all. Uh, and I bought more olive oil. How's everybody doing? That's the rest of the coconut oil. There's very little. It's probably not even worth saving. I say it's not worth saving. 
for the two drops. Two minutes, is it? Uh, here's where I think I might use that other spatula. Big, big daddy of the rhythm. Okay, said about two minutes, so. You know what, I didn't taste the papaya thing, did I? I need to do that. didn't work so well. Okay. How about the other side? Come on. Shoot. Well, that one came apart. Well, two out of three ain't bad. So I should go quickly and uh, check out the uh, our papaya over here. Uh, taste, 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 taste. Okay. Switch over here. <clears throat> Uh, I think a fork would be in order. Okay, Let's see if it's gotten. Now I tell you the um, lady's recipe that uh, I saw this uh, her pictures. She said they were green papaya, and I'll swear to you, what she had cooking was not green papaya. That was ripe papaya. It was bright orange, and I wondered if cooking it is what changed the color. And I'll be damned if uh, it did not. It did not change the color. The color she no change. So, uh, lady has herself some papaya that was not green papaya. Or maybe it was regular papaya that wasn't green and she made the mistake that I did. I don't know. But the green papaya salad I've had before is just, you know, not that it's not cooked. You can't eat it raw. But pregnant women should not eat green papaya. So, if you're with child, do not eat green papaya. Hotness. Hmm. Hmm. Hard to tell. Not tender. Definitely needs more salt. You know, there's a little part of me that feels like um, throwing in the uh, MSG. Yeah, salt? Yeah, they're like different things. No, no, no. In fact, that, uh, which forgot which chef, the, the, the really, really French guy you see on Top Chef all the time. Uh -huh. um, he talked about, uh, give me anything, and with a combination of salt, pepper, and MSG, I can make it perfect. You know, blah, blah, like that. And they're like, oh my god, you weren't kidding. I says, yeah. It gives it the umami.
point is it's not soft. But I don't know how long it would be until it's soft and I don't want the um, the fish to be overcooked. But you know what? You did buy that stuff, right? What stuff? That accent thing? Yeah. I have it in your hiding in here somewhere. I mean, there's a time to use uh, something random. This would be it. You don't get too many chances. Although, if I can't find it, I can't use it. Aha! Uh -huh. Found you. How do you open it? Do you need help? I need to puncture this. <coughs> I just feel like I'm just gonna go get a little crazy here. Just a hint. that fish is going to be overdone, like right now. Mmm! Mmm! Now it's good. Yay! Okay, time to plate. Everybody move. Don't fall on the food. That would be a bad thing. Mmm. Actually tasty. Tasty, tasty. I think that was the magic ingredient. It really is. I think that was the magic thing. You've got the magic touch. Okay. Ah! Just trying to give you a look. Okay, here goes. Okay, so here I have a rice that's in the rice cooker with the pandan leaves, which you're gonna throw out. Cooked in coconut. So there, get us a spoon. So a bed of rice. Bed of rice. Maybe a little more because I'm hungry. Okay. Gonna put down our uh, our papaya, our green papaya curry. I'm gonna have to move that over there because I think the mountain's gonna have to go to Mohammed. Okay. That looks nice. Can you see? A trip to the South Sea Islands. Do right you want a knife? I'm, I'm uh, a knife off the knife, no? yes. I don't think you'll need one, though. Okay. Okay. No knife. Uh, then our fish, our fish can move over this way. Okay. I lost a piece of fish somewhere. Okay. I'm leaving an extra piece of fish for myself for like seconds. Just because. Uh, and we're dressing with the scallions uh, on both. Ah, it looks so good. Thank you. No one said anything about scallions, but I saw someone did something with a picture of it, and it seemed like a good idea. So 
So, here we go. Night one, Solomon Islands. We have our, waiting for the white to adjust, our green uh, papaya curry and our fish curry over here. Uh, and that is the Solomon Islands, night one. Uh, we're gonna go eat. Thank you for joining us. Um, look for night two. I think it's only gonna be two nights. Definitely next Tuesday. Mm, there's a chance there could be a soup on Sunday, but I don't want to guarantee it. But uh, definitely next Tuesday. Solomon Islands, check it out. Uh, again, everything's on the blog at cliffyland.com. Pictures, links to the original recipes. Uh, these videos, uh, pictures of how it went, reviews, information about the country. Catch up on the countries you missed. Uh, and see the videos for whatever you want. So uh, that's on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Pinterest, now on YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube. I need more subscribers. Thank you for joining us. Uh, catch you all next time. Uh, gotta go eat. Bye.